Welcome to Ronnie's Garage. Uh, we are holding Rolls-Royce Owners Club of Southern California's uh, monthly tech meet. And today we're going to be working on the Silver Spur, an 86 Silver Spur, and we're going to be looking at the cruise control. All right. Good. Right here is a, the cruise control actuator. Uh, Rolls-Royce used this vacuum style actuator for years. Uh, I think from the first car they put it on in the mid-70s. And they used it on these cars until I think the late 80s. And uh, this is an 86. As you can see, this thing has some issues. The customer brought it in, or the club member brought it in, and he's, he just worked on this and said he found the chain was off. This chain is what opens the throttle, if you look at that. So when you hit that press button, the, the, the set button on the car, and the parameters are right. In other words, the brakes can't be on. There's a, it runs through the brake light switch, and the speed has to be at a certain speed, uh, over 40 normally. Then what happens is when you press that set button, engine vacuum pulls the throttle open. You can see that. And then there's a small computer in the dash that, that uh, will adjust the speed according to the inputs. You know, the speed coming from the transmission and what you set it at. So it should, it should modulate, kind of. And this one, this is real common on this, this model here with this EGR pipe up here. This pipe right here brings exhaust gas up and dumps it into the intake to reduce emissions. And it gets real hot here. And this one, as you can see, it, it's, it's a little blistered. It stayed out in the sun too long. Okay. So what I'm going to do is pull this unit off and then uh, we'll put a new diaphragm on it. Make sure it's, uh, the valves inside are not sticking. And then we'll let the owner take it out on the road and try it. It's kind of hard to test it in here. Uh, it is possible, but I hate running a car up to 40, 50 miles an hour on a hoist. It always makes me nervous. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull that unit off. Be like Ferris Bueller's day off. Yeah, only in reverse, right? So this mounts to the valve cover, the intake manifold, and the dipstick tube, or the dipstick tube mounts to it. So what I normally do is pull the dipstick out, just lay it down. You've got quarter inch bolts which have 7 16 heads. I just loosen this one because it holds a bracket. And then you can take this one off. In fact, I'll just take it all the way off. The cool thing about the rolls is they got these little bolt holders up here. <laughs> There we go. So, don't, don't lose your parts because this, this unit has a vacuum hose going to it. It goes to the manifold and then plus there's a little plug here that has these squeeze tabs that unlock it so you can pull it loose. And this thing has a spacer to keep it up, up off that bracket. All right, that dude's out. out. Alright, if you want to come around to the cart here, I can show you guys in the cart. Okay, it's got these two vacuum valves. Okay, they have three wires and they share a ground, I think. They ground through each other. So, in these vacuum valves, they're spring-loaded to come this way. So one goes to the vacuum intake that goes where, okay, you have suction on here. So they want to keep that close when it's not in use so you don't have a vacuum leak and it doesn't uh, operate. And then these things right here, it's kind of, can somebody hold that light on there? Thank you. As you can see, these are, this one was stuck when I tried to operate it. They should move back and forth. Like I said, they should. Yeah, that, it was stuck the first time I touched it. That one was stuck too. Did you guys hear that when I kind of mm -hmm. pried on it? It went pop. So that's, you want to make sure that those things aren't stuck because you can put your new diaphragm on it, it still won't work, and you think, well, that's not the problem. And you go and buy a $600 or whatever it is cruise control unit and you say, well, that's not the problem. And, but uh, that's what I found. This, use it. Uh, you, uh, you can. You can use a little silicone-based 
lubricant if you want, just for the rubber and just put it. And what usually causes them to stick is never being used. Yep. It's a piece of rubber that's under pressure against a piece of metal and if it hasn't been used in, since the car was new or even longer, then that'll, that'll cause you some problems. And what I'm showing you here, just so everybody understands who's watching this video, this is the problem nine and a half times out of ten in my experience. Simple little rubber piece and uh, there is a test box which if it doesn't work will pull out with an instruction sheet and what you have to do is you get in under the dash, disconnect the cruise control module and then plug this test box in line and then it has a bunch of toggle switches and all that and you can check all the circuits. So, but I always start here. I'm, I like to cheat. I like the simplest things. So this is the new one. You can see it's it's brand new, so it's all uh, and it's distorted tight. This thing here. You know, tight. Uh, for years, Rolls Royce only sold the whole unit, and it was really expensive. This I get this from an aftermarket parts supplier, and it fits like an '85 Jaguar. And you can buy it, and I forget what I paid, 50 bucks or something like that for it, instead of hundreds and hundreds. And it just has a, you can use sealer on this, but it's not necessary with a new one. I have tried sealing old ones in a pinch. But as you can see, just so you can see, there's a slot that the metal fits around. So I usually just start with this side. Am I moving around too much for you, John? Okay, and then the spring goes in here. Let me get the other piece off the car. The spring just kind of floats around. Oh, I see a couple of tabs right here. Oh, sorry. I didn't know you were right there. Here's the other side. It doesn't really float around the spring. It has some tabs on there that hold it in place and it also should center in that. And that's to allow it to release. And it's kind of important with these with a new diaphragm especially because you can see how much tighter does it is. Does this come with a spring inside or the spring, the spring That is just a piece of wire to give it uh, under vacuum. Oh, the new one comes with it, yeah. Okay. Otherwise it would just suck it this way. You want it to pull this so way. The other ones already got oh. Yeah, so the brand new one comes with it, yeah. So, you just, now that we got the valves unstuck, you stick that spring on there, fit it on that shoulder, and then you work your way around. You have to orient this correctly once it's on there, but you can do that later. So concentrate more on making sure you get it into that groove properly. There. So, when the, this unit is on the car, the vacuum port points down. The bolt goes through the top here. So it, the other side of this hooks to a chain that connects to the throttle linkage. And I always like to make sure that this faces up. There we go. So. So now that's facing up, well, it goes down this way. And one thing, there, in the uh, shop manual there is a little procedure for checking the slack in the chain, um, which is important because if you have this chain too tight, it's going to hold your throttle open. You won't get all the way off on your throttle. Uh, if it's too loose, then what happens is when the cruise control is working and it gets to its speed and it's going too fast so it backs off, it releases and then you get this big loop of slack in there and then when it that needs to pick up speed again, it has to pull all that slack in so it kind of does a, a herky jerky motion. So now we'll just go ahead and put this back on there. I usually, I'll show you on the, when I put it on there, I like to have just not straight across on a chain but just, just one link past that. So we'll go ahead and put this back on.